And there's Sergei Kovalev watching the action. One of the most devastating fighters in the sport. A top pound for pound candidate. And uh, looking forward very much to his showdown with Andre Ward. And while Kovalev Roy may be the crusher of the light heavyweights, the most powerful little man in the sport is Nicaragua's Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez with 20, 38 knockouts in 45 fights, all wins, no losses. He may be the best littlest man ever. He's one of the best littlest men I've ever seen. I'm now joined ringside by the great Roy Jones. Roy, Chocolatito has campaigned at 105, 108, and 112 pounds. They're all weight divisions now in boxing. You should be 112 or below. Now he's moving past the flyweight division against a really good fighter in that fighter's prime. What does he need to do to win tonight? Well, all he has to do is continue being himself. What we've seen from Chocolatito is that every time he fights at 112, he usually blows up to around the featherweight division. So going up, although it's only three pounds, shouldn't be a really bad thing for him. All he has to do is make sure that he can go up be smart about it, cut, it, cut the ring off on his opponent because his opponent has very good footwork and is a very slick, smart boxer himself. Be Chocolatito and everything should be okay. Meantime, Quadras, a really good, also undefeated fighter, is making, trying to make his seventh title defense. Why does he have a chance to make it a successful one tonight? The reason he has a chance to make it a successful one is because of what I just said. He has beautiful footwork. He's had that title for two and a half years. That title is like a girlfriend now. Sometimes it's hard to get rid of a girlfriend after two years. It's hard for somebody to just take her away from you. He doesn't want to give up his belt. He's a very good boxer, a very smart guy, has a lot of charisma about him. He's a good dude, and he's going to be there to win tonight. This should be a really good fight. Quadras has real chances to win. And as good as Chocolatito is, is cutting off the ring, Quadras can move. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez versus Carlos Quadras. And there you see it. They're around the same age, but that one year is significant because Chocolatito has had a long and tough career, fought a lot of good fighters. So at that weight class, 29 years old and 40 plus fights, you're much closer to the end than the beginning. They're around the same height, but Quadras is taller. He has longer arms. They weighed in the same, and although Chocolatito has blown up bet um, between fights, and it's well known in boxing circles, struggled to make 112 pounds in the past, though he's denied it, Quadras has been campaigning in a bigger weight class. He's considered the bigger man. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is one of the sweet sciences, great sweet, sweet sciences greatest current practitioners, maybe the best of all, maybe number one pound for pound. And to prepare for this challenge, Chocolatito chose to train alongside another top pound for pound fighter and dominant champion. Well, normally, we have our training camp in Costa Rica, but for this fight against Carlos Cuadras, we decided to come to Big Bear, where Gennady Golovkin trains with his team. In the mornings, Gennady and I would go out to run together. After that, we would come back to the gym and do abdominal work. And then in the afternoon, we would do shadow boxing. It was very nice, because I learned new things. I would see his strength and his power and some of the things he did. For example, uh, that looping shot he has is very good. And he's knocked out a lot of champions with that. My whole team and his team, we got along very well. The time we spent there was fantastic. We had a really good relationship. Going forward, I can't wait to get back together with Gennady to achieve bigger and better things. There's Chocolatito. He enters first because he is the challenger here tonight. Moving up in weight. Take on the belt holder, Carlos Cuadras, who's not just the belt holder, but maybe a, aside from Inoui, who's a super talented 150 pounds, Cuadras is the class of the division. Certainly one of its best two fighters. And Chocolatito knows he has his work cut out for him tonight. That's why I think he went to train with Triple G because he wanted to get ready, get ready for literally the biggest test of his career. And I think this is the biggest test of his career. Roy, he has 
gained acceptance by most, if not by you and I, but by most in boxing as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, has fought and beaten a virtual who's who in the lightest weight divisions. And it's not just that he fought them and beat them, it's the way he's beaten them. He dominates them, and that makes him that makes the statement much stronger when you dominate the high competition at that weight class. Here's Carlos Cuadras. There you see he was inspired to start fighting by Julio Cesar Chavez, watching his fight against Hector Camacho, feeling the buildup for that fight, had 160 amateur fights, a decorated amateur, won the 07 Pan Am Games. That's no small feat. Has made six defenses successfully of his 115-pound title. And this is his fourth fight with Rudy Hernandez brother of the late, great Gennaro Hernandez, who is most known as a cut man, including for Chaco Latito in boxing, but also trains fighters, in this case, leaving Chaco Latito's camp as a cut man, joining Quadras's as the chief trainer. And here's Quadras, full of self-confidence, Roy, as much as anything, that gives him success, as much as his talent, or his amateur background, or his power, or his speed. It's his self-view. Quadras sees himself as a star, and as the winner, and expects to win tonight. And that's why Rudy Hernandez chose this opportunity, because he realizes that in Quadras, he has a really live horse in the race tonight. You know, guys like Chocolatito are generally avoided by other fighters. Quadras won his last fight, wiped out his opponent in a dominant title defense, and then called out Chocolatito. Called for this fight tonight. When I asked him why, why call for a guy who's considered the best pound for pound when he is a draw in Mexico, a moneymaker, he said to be the best, you got to beat the best. And that's what I want to do. The boxing world lost one of its all-time toughest and most popular fighters when Bobby Chacon passed away at the age of 64. The Hall of Famer schoolboy won 59 professional bouts, many of which happened between the walls of this fabulous forum. He also captured two world titles, the WBC Feather and Super Featherweight Championships. His smile could light up any room he walked into, and it will be dearly missed. At this time, we ask that you please rise in silence as we pay tribute to Bobby Schoolboy Chacon. Thank you, rest in peace, champ. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world from the fabulous forum here in Inglewood, California, it is time for the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Presented by K2 Promotions in association with Taken Promotions and sponsored by Cabal, luxury Mexican wine, and Cerveza Tecate Born Bowl. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission Executive Officer Andy Foster, Chairman John Carvelli, WBC Supervisor Lou Tao. Your three judges scoring this bout at ringside on the 10 point must system from California, Max DeLuca. From Illinois, Robert Heckle and from North Carolina, Kathy Leonard. When the bell rings and the action begins, your referee in charge, Thomas Taylor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Nicaraguenses, Mexicanos, Dile al Mundo, make some noise if you are ready! 
Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue with white, he wins it officially 114 and one half pounds. His professional record stands perfect in 45 bouts, 45 victories, no defeats, 38 wins by way of knockout. He is a three-weight world champion, considered the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world from Manoa, Nicaragua. The undefeated challenger, Roman El Chocolatito. And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing blue trunks, trimmed in silver. He weighed in officially 114 and three quarter pounds. He stands perfect as a professional with 34 victories. No defeats, one draw, 26 wins by way of knockout. He is the reigning, defending, undefeated WBC Super Flyweight Champion of the World. Guys, trunks a little high here, trunks a little high here. I'm gonna let them work in here, work in here. I've given your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my commands. Touch them up, back to your corner. Chocolatito, considered by many, if not most, the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Undefeated, most by knockout, is taking on Arguably the toughest challenge of his career, considering Quadras' resume and size. And we begin round one. Quadras jabbing to the body and showing that movement that Rudy Hernandez, his trainer, wants from him in this fight against Chocolatito, Roy. Yeah, Quadras comes out right away, uh, Max, to try to go ahead and get it started. You know, he knows that it's gonna be a long night for him, so the quicker he, go, he gets engaged, the better off for him. This is gonna be a really interesting matchup of footwork. Chocolatito, really good at cutting off the ring, not just following his opponent, but forcing him to the place he wants. The ropes, the corner. And Quadras, with good footwork of his own, has said he needs to stay one step ahead of Chocolatito. Good footwork and good punching power too, Max. He's not a bad puncher. And naturally talented. Quadras has an athletic ability that is obvious when you watch him fight. A quality. Latito applying pressure. He's a fighter like Triple G, who can apply pressure without throwing punches because his footwork is so good, he's constantly in a position to hit his opponent. And he hits so hard, his opponent knows that he frequently achieves a successful offensive position, forcing his opponent to move and expend energy. And that's what he's doing right now. He's making Quadras burn a lot of energy early. Cutting the ring off, keeping that pressure on, staying close to him, making him fight when he does not want to fight. That's how he makes you uncomfortable in the rings. And we talk about Quadras' movement, but Chocotito has some of the best footwork laterally that I've ever seen. He cuts the ring off quicker, easier, and uh, smoother than most anybody that I know.
Good uppercut, up jab by Quadras. Chocolatito is here applying a little bit more energetic pressure than we're used to seeing him apply in the first round. I think he understands the challenge in front of him and knows he cannot wait. He cannot wait and cannot let this guy get in the fight because if Quadras gets confidence with the personality that he has already, can you imagine what that would mean? Quadras has fought a good first round and yet was not able to impose what he wanted to do on Chocolatito, although I suppose you could say the same is true in reverse. That concludes round one. And there's a curious onlooker, Roy Naoya Inoui. He is the guy in the lighter weight divisions that I and others have been salivating about, <laughs> thinking about a potential matchup one day, hopefully soon, with Chocolatito. He's considered the best 115 pounder in the world, Inoui. Quadras is generally considered second. At the top, we need to unload, 6 7. All right. We're good. We're doing good. Deep breath now. Deep breath now. Deep breath. All right. I want you to work the hooks. The hooks and the uppercut. Careful with his uppercut. And then looping shot. That's what he's working with. All right? That double loop. All right? The jab, 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 jab. Getting set for round two. In round one, we saw two world-class fighters, one looking to move, the other to stalk. No big fireworks, but both impressive in their display of skill, particularly in their positioning and footwork. Chocolatito Roy, one of those guys where his opponent can do everything he's supposed to do, and still Chocolatito can make it turn out bad for him. And that's kind of what happened with Quadras last round. He did everything he wanted to do, but I think Chocolatito still landed the better punches. He kept the better foot position. Uh, and he's made Quadras burn a lot of unnecessary energy like he's doing right now. And Chocolatito is almost running at Quadras right now. Quadras may have to land something significant to make Chocolatito respect him because for whatever reason, Chocolatito doesn't seem very worried about return fire at the moment. No, he doesn't. And Quadras can punch. We assume. Well, 26 of his 34 opponents know that he can punch. <laughs> yeah, but we don't know those 26 guys. <laughs> we know who's in, who's in front of oh, right now. Yeah, right. We, knew, we know none of them were Chocolatito. <laughs> exactly. Oh, good hook by Quadras, though. Yep. Good right hand by Chocolatito. But Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez walks through it and continues to apply. I, I'm not used to seeing him apply this kind of almost frantic pressure this early in the fight. Like many pressure fighters, it takes Chocolatito sometimes a few rounds to really get smoking. Here, it's not the case. You know why? You know why, Max? Because he's sparred with him before. He knows him. He knows what's in front of him. He knows what it takes to get to him. When he's sparred with him, he probably sparred with him in three and four round increments. But he knew that if he just kept the pressure on, he would get to it. So he also, came out and get right to the job here. Choco Latino fights nothing but high quality fighters. And McWilliams Arroyo was no different in his last fight. But I think Chocolatito understands that what he did against Arroyo is not good enough against Quadras. He won it most of the rounds, he won a decision, but he didn't knock his man out, and he didn't look like the normal Chocolatito that we're used to seeing. Tonight, he looks like he's on a mission. Well, he got to break Quadras' uh, wheel, and that's what he's trying to do early. Not let Quadras ever feel like he's in the fight, because if you do, Quadras can become a problem with the matter of self-confidence, I mean, with the level of self-confidence that he has. Good enough, I'm cutting by the shot. Chocolatito, I hope people can see this. The way he rolls punches off his shoulder, it, the counters off his shoulder so they don't land cleanly. The way he throws both hands and varies the speed and power of his punches to the head and body, it is masterful. 
Following our coverage of boxing here on HBO, stay tuned for the premiere of Road to Canelo Smith for an inside look at Canelo Alvarez and Liam Smith as they prepare for their upcoming showdown. And next Saturday night on HBO pay-per-view, middleweight title holder Canelo Alvarez makes a temporary, we hope, move down in weight to challenge Liam Smith for his 154-pound belt. Uppercuts, uppercuts, breathe. Very good. When he starts throwing, no, 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 don't let him build. Don't let him build. You keep your guard up there. Keep your guard there, right? And turn him around. When he goes in, turn the gloves. That's your opportunity. When he goes in, work it and connect. Rudy Hernandez in the corner. Normally, Chuck Latito's cut man, who's working Quadras' corner as the trainer for tonight's fight, is well aware of the problems Chuck Latito presents uh, as an opponent, was well aware of it, eyes wide open going into this fight, believes that Quadras has the kind of athletic quality to upset Chuck Latito, as more than one observer has felt. And there, Quadras landed a really nice right hand, Roy. Yeah, but not really much afterwards, Max. You can't hit him with one punch, uh, Chocolatito that is, and think that's gonna stop the show because it's not. We saw Brian Valoria almost drop him with a body shot, and it changed nothing. It just He just didn't throw a few punches for a minute, but he kept that same more aggressive attitude up. Rudy Hernandez has also said that he believes, as great as Alexis Arguello was, one of the most respected and beloved champions in the history of boxing, he believes Roman Gonzalez is even better that that Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is already the greatest Nicaraguan fighter who ever lived Do you think well, he's there yet Roy? Well, you have to agree with that because if he made it if, if a girl took his time out to train him and teach him everything that he knew and then along with the things he picked up on his own I mean 1978 Camaros are not as good as 2008 Camaros. You have to get better with time. So if he's not better than a grill, then there's something wrong with him. Well, he's like a 2016 Mack truck Ex tonight. Exactly. A 2016 version of Alexis Aguero. It has to be better. What's... I don't know if I agree with that yet, but Chuck Latito's getting there. I mean, here as usual, he is taking a tremendous fighter, a world-class fighter, among the best in the division, and moving up in weight to do it. And he's turning him, turning Quadras, into every other opponent he's fought. That is, a guy who already, as much as good work as he's doing, seems to be holding on for dear life, and it's only the third round. Yeah, I've seen Aguero take, a, take apart a lot of guys, and I've seen his footwork, and I've seen him cut the ring off, but this kid is something far more remarkable uh, footwork-wise yes. than I think Aguero has ever been. And he has all the other tools that Aguero possesses, too. So he has to be better than Aguero. Arguello, I think, fought better opposition uh, so far. How, although Chuck Latito's fought very good opposition, but Chuck Latito's footwork is extraordinary. Arguello could be given problems by movers. That doesn't be, appear to be the case with Chuck Latito. And not that Aguero is not a great fighter. That takes nothing away from Aguero, but Aguero would be mad if we didn't think his pupil had surpassed where he was because that means that he didn't make no true progress in teaching the man how to fight. Really good round for Chuck Latito, Roman Chuck Latito Gonzalez. And Better round. Only the third. Better round for Quattro. Just a reminder. Later tonight, we will take a look back at this afternoon's proceedings across the pond in London, England at the O2 Arena as Kell Brook moved up two weight divisions to take on the fearsome middleweight champion destroyer, Gennady Triple G Golovkin, coming up immediately after this fight. Don't bring your guard down. All right, don't bring that guard down. Great. You gotta throw that hook. That's what you need. You gotta throw the hook. This one, like that. Okay? Okay. And we get ready to start round four, three in the books. All appearing to go to 
Chocolatito said maybe the first, but let's find out. Harold Letterman, how have you? How do you have it after three? Okay, uh, Max, I've got a three to nothing, thirty to twenty-seven. Chocolatito Gonzalez, you know he, he puts on pressure, backs the guy up. His effective aggressiveness is tremendous. As a matter of fact, in the second round, Carlos Cuevas was absolutely running away. I mean, running away. Chocolatito landing the hardest shots, putting on the pressure, doing more damage. I love those high top shoes he wears also. Three to nothing, Chocolatito. Cuadras, a decorated amateur, as we mentioned. A very self-possessed fighter, super confident, really talented. The naturally larger man campaigning successfully in the heavier division. Undefeated, and yet is in against just a phenomenon tonight. Yeah, but look like Quadras is doing better this round, Max. He started this round out better than he started the last two out. That can be disheartening against Roman Gonzalez, Roy, because you do some good early work, and then he's on you, just like this. Yes. Quadras called him out after his last fight. Careful what you wish for. Because <laughs> there's Gonzalez. Chocolatito's straight right hand, Roy. It's so precise, and the effects are so obvious as soon as it lands. It reminds me of Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. The way he can throw it as a lead, he can throw it as you know at the end of a one-two. It's so accurate and effective. Can throw it anytime he gets ready, just like that. The Quadras is fighting back. Yes, he is. And Chocolatito needs to defend himself a little better because a good shot may sit him down just coming in without defense like this. You're right. Chocolatito's left eye is showing the signs of some of those shots Quadras is landing. Well, Chocolatito can be hit. He mentions, I asked him what's the difference between him and Triple G. He says, he bends at the waist a little more than Triple G. Triple G's a bigger puncher than he is, even in a pound-for-pound -pound sense, I guess. But when you're as aggressive as Roman Gonzalez, you're going to get oh, hit some, high. and he got hit just then. Good uppercut by Quadras. But he, as usual in this fight, is doing more of the hitting. He's throwing more, he's landing more, he's landing at a higher percentage. And he's landing the better shots. And he's mentally wearing Quadras down. Because it wears you down when you do great work and it doesn't seem to matter. The Chargers is still in the fight. Four in the books. It was a headbutt, huh? Bring your arms down, bring your arms down, bring your arms down. You gotta move that head. You gotta move that head, eh? No, hey. deep breath. I want you to work the body. You understand? He's already got his mouth open. But I want you to work with the hooks of the body. Straight shots to the top, to the chest, and then you're sticking down to the body. Here's the right hand, I think, put that mark under the eye of uh, Chocolatito. That straight right, right there. He walked right into it without defense. Then he comes back with his own counter right hand. After that, which was a probably a little bit more, a little bit more effective shot. And maybe one of the reasons that wasn't thrown harder by Quadras off the proper footing is because if you do, if you throw a more traditional right hand, Chocolatito slips it. You want to hit him, you got to kind of throw it almost like a jab. You better throw it like a jab, or he'll slip it for sure. Tito's left eye looks a little worse for the wear even since the end of the third round to my eye at least Good left hook upstairs by Chocolate Tito And Quadra's face is holding up really well. We don't see any damage This has to be a confidence booster for him Quadra slips the right hand upstairs and ties up Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez Ooh, nice footwork there, Roy. Switching his feet to land the left hand by Quadras. Yeah, he's a very good... Oh, whoa! 
No, it was okay. cut. Temporarily, I thought that shot actually turned Roman Gonzalez around, but it was a slip. Good, but, shot. good big confidence from Quadras. Remember a couple fights ago, Brian Valoria hurt Chocolatito badly with a body shot. Of course, he was stopped later in the same round, but Quadras a more effective overall fighter than Valoria at this point in Valoria's career. Oh, good shot. Good left hook upstairs by Quadras. So Chocolatito rem reminded to pick his hands up to block the next one and goes right back on the attack. Now Quadras being Quadras. He's the kind of fighter that feeds off energy, feeds off the crowd, Quadras, feeds off his own success. But Chocolatito's not bothered by any of that, just goes right back on the attack. He's a machine. This combination by Quadras. It was, although Chocolatito in the middle of that combination landed two really good, good shots. shots. Yes, some good body shots. I think I'd have rather been Roman Gonzalez there, Roy. Now the mouse under the left eye of Chocolatito indicating that Quadras is landing that right hand. Good right hand by the challenger. He's the challenger tonight, Roman Gonzalez, searching for his belt, a belt of one kind or another in his fourth weight division. Good body shot. Really good body shot. With the left hand by Chocolatito. And Quadras flurries. Quadras has had his best round here in the fourth. Excuse me, the fifth. Get some confidence in yourself, all right? Closer or too far, he catches me. But turn him around. If you're too far, turn him around. I'm close in, but you can turn him and throw the combination. Three, four punches. Good. To the chest. When he, when he crouches, when he crouches, when he goes down, he's gonna, you're going to catch him. Although Quadras had a really good round, Chocolatito does things like this. This sneak straight right hand. Boom, right over the top, and it has to be a confidence breaker. Because right when you think things are going your way, wham, all of a sudden he hits you with a big shot that just turns things around. The famed forum, Roy, really, uh, people say the legendary this or that, but that applies in this case. You know, because of the quirk of boxing scoring, where unless you score a knockdown, you almost never get a 10-8 round. My sense has been Chocolatito's been dominant so far tonight, but I could easily see a scorecard. You're looking at Harold Letterman's there, gave all five rounds to Chocolatito. I could easily see a scorecard where the first and fifth were given to Quadras, making this a close fight on some cards. Well, we still got seven more rounds to go, Max, and Quadras is looking better now than he did in, the, in round two, three, and four. See there? Yep, Quadras is not discouraged somehow not at all. by the relentless on onslaught, the relentless and accurate onslaught of Good Chocolatito. Hook. Good hook by Quadras. Quadras is, as I said, sees himself as a star, Roy, and is not so ready to give up his belt. Not at all. Chocolatito not only has a mouse on, under the left eye, I think there's some swelling on the left side of his face and the right, there's a little cut, it looks like, over his right eye now. There over Roman Gonzalez's right eye. There it is. Something he's not used to, for sure. It's going to be interesting to see how Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez fares over the second half of this fight. He's had 45 pro fights, all wins. But he's been in against some excellent fighters and some very tough fights. He's 29 years old. In this weight area, fighters tend to age earlier than in heavier weights, weight classes. He's 29 years old, 45 fights, and he's in tough tonight. Kind of reminds you of the Michael Carbajal career.
He's cut over one eye, swollen on the other side of his face, and on the attack. Chuck Latito. Quad is looking for something big right here. This is not something else that Roman Gonzalez is really good at, Roy. He seems to be almost taking a breather, even as he's active, not throwing those heavy shots, but touching them, touching them, touching them, yeah, varying the speed on his punches. Setting up Quadras, it looks for the heavy shots that follow those little tap, tap, tap shots. And Quadras' footwork is saving him from that big shot, Max, because he's doing what he usually does, and it usually lands against guys, but it's not landing against Quadras tonight. Oh, good hook by Quadras. It was. I thought the hook shook Chocolatito up at the end of that round. October 29, it's the long-awaited heavyweight championship rematch between Tyson Fury and Vladimir Klitschko. Can Fury follow up last November's upset? Or will Klitschko regain the title he held for 10 years? And then November 19th, HBO pay-per-view brings you the light heavyweight matchup we've all been waiting for. Unified champ Sergey Kovalev against the great Andre Ward. Two top-notch pound-for-pound performers, two very different styles, two undefeated boxers at the top of their games. If you're a boxing fan and you have a pulse, you cannot miss this one, November 19th. You gotta put those hooks in, and then you gotta bring them up at the uppercuts. Let's go, everybody out. For the first time, Chocolatito looking like he's been through the ringer in this fight, looking a little discouraged. Maybe Harold Letterman, how do you have the first half of the fight scored? <laughs> okay, Max, I get it 5 to 1. 59, 55, Chocolatito Gonzalez. You know, Max, the problem with Quadras is he runs so much that he doesn't get his feet set. In other words, if he'd stop running and, and whack Chocolatito with some good hard shots, you see what he did there. You know, he'd be winning more rounds. The problem is he's always on his horse. I mean, he's he's done so much running away in this fight that it's hurt his punching power. There's no doubt about it. Well, you know, of course, when they stand toe-to-toe, Chocolatito is dangerous. Five to one, Chocolatito Gonzalez. I think I agree with you for a couple rounds earlier in the fight. I don't think he's been running recently. I think it's been purposeful movement, and he's had some success. Although Chocolatito here is finding success of his own again. Quadras right now is in much better position than Chocolatito. If you say right now who would you rather be, you'd rather be Quadras right now because things are going in his favor more. That doesn't mean that, like I say, he's going to win it, but things are really in his favor right now because he's so happy to be alive and up and well at this point in this fight that he's taking chances that normal guys we see in this situation wouldn't take. Well, I mean, I think so far the question is who's taking the other's power better? And Chocolatito's carried his power up weight divisions with him. But so far, at least in the last couple rounds, I feel Quadras is shaking up Chocolatito with his power shots more than the reverse. Yes, and if he, if he lands one to the body at the right time, we could see something disastrous. There's also the optics, which Chocolat you know, Chocolatito's face is starting to fall apart. There's blood smeared over it. There's swelling. His eye is closing. And... and Big left hook from Quadras. Quadras' face is relatively unmarked. And the ref did come over between rounds and say that the cut was caused for a punch, not a hit, but the cut on Chocotito's eye. Well, the, the emotional stability of Quadras to withstand that early barrage by Chocolatito where it looked like he was just being outclassed not give up on himself and put himself in a position now to be in a very competitive fight, although he's starting to take a little beating over the last 30 seconds. Quadras is. Good hook by Chapecito. That's the downside, the, the, the drawback of doing what Harold Letterman suggested and standing more toe-to-toe, -to -toe, or at least not running as much with Chocolatito. It puts you in range for those combinations. Well, Harold is from the phone booth era, so he want to see the fight in the phone booth anyway. <laughs> really good back and forth round. Between two top-notch champions.
That's it, chocolate. That's it, chocolate. Those are the combinations that I want. From the bottom to the top. Deep breath now. Deep breath. Deep breath. You gotta throw a bunch of punches. When you're there, you gotta get, throw, throw punches, just throw punches. You've got to throw punches. Get your, let your hands go. You know, forget about all that stuff now. We, you're, we could lose the championship. No. Getting ready for round eight of a terrific 115 pound scrap between the man most considered the best pound for pound fighter in the world. That's Chocolatito, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, and Mexican rising star, undefeated belt holder at 115 pounds, Carlos Cuadras. Naoya Inoui, considered by most the best 115 pounder in the world, if it's not Cuadras, looking on ringside, taking in the proceedings, seeing who his likely big money matchup is going to be against. Most presume it will be Chocolatito, but the way Cuadras has fought in this fight, I could see where he's very much in it on the scorecards, Roy. I can too, Max. Oh, good shot by Chocolatito. That's why he can't stand there with Chocolatito, because if you stand there with him, he's gonna punish you. Rudy Hernandez, normally Chocolatito's cut man. In this case, Cuadras' trainer said that one of the things he worries about in this fight is Cuadras has the mentality, the spirit of a fighter. And so even though movement is in his best interest, at times he's afraid he's going to get a little too brave against Chocolatito. Cuadras looking at Rudy for instructions and is reminded to move his hands and then move his feet. Throw those combinations and move. Oh, good shot. Yes, Chocolatito normally when he catches his opponent the way he just did, when he sets him up for those big power punches, they crumble. Not the case against the larger, it sounds funny to say larger, 115 pound, natural 115 pounder, Carlos Cuadras. Well, it just so happened that Cuadras comes into the fight three pounds heavier than him anyway. Big is a relative term, and it's relative here with these flyweight, super flyweight fighters. But you can see Chocolatito's power not quite here what it was in the lighter, even lighter, rather, weight divisions. I don't know if that's the case, Max. I have to give some of that to Quadras. He's just taking it better. I think Chocolatito's power is still the same because he's delivering some vicious shots. It's just that this kid is taking them a lot better than we ever seen anybody take them. Could be, although I'm reminded that in his last fight, Chocolatito's last fight, he also went the distance against Arroyo, McWilliams Arroyo, who's a good fighter. So that means the punching power is probably still the same. Oh, good shot by Quadras. Yeah, they exchanged left hooks there. Little uppercut flurry by Quadras, which is what he looked into the corner, and Rudy Hernandez told him earlier in the round he had some success, went back to it, and now a cut over Quadras' right eye. Time. Coming up later in the telecast, Roy, we look back to earlier this afternoon when Triple G, middleweight destroyer, took on excellent welterweight titleist moving up two weight classes, Kel Brook. That immediately after this excellent Chocolatito Quadras matchup. He's got nothing left. He's got nothing left. You gotta move those arms. Block and punch always to the body. Don't work the head. Work the body. More the body. Okay? Here we are in round nine. Roy, 
I saw a look on Chocolatito's face I am not used to seeing. I don't know if I've ever seen it before, even in the Estrada fight, a very tough fight. He looked um, disheartened coming I, into this round. I don't think he's disheartened. I think he's a little fatigued. Um, he also sees the blood coming from Quarge's eye now, too. So yep. that would be a little bit of a confidence builder. But his corner told him a good thing. They told him, don't worry about the head. Go to the body. And that's what he should be doing. And it's the same thing that Quadras should be doing, really. But both of them still seem to want to land head shots because they want to knock the other guy out. Well, Chocolatito has a target now that cut over the right eye of Quadras, which was ruled an accidental headbutt, not the result of a punch, the official ruling. Body shot might have hurt Quadras a little bit there. We have reason to believe that the cut was opened up by a punch from Chocolatito. We'll show you between rounds coming up. Meantime, Chocolatito on the attack as usual. It, it's, it's difficult to call the blow-by-blow -blow action with Chocolatito because it's a non-stop steady stream of lefts and rights. Uppercut, oh, right left hand. Right hand over the top by oh, Chocolatito. Good right hand by Chocolatito. Oh, good body shot by Quadros. doing what you wanted, Roy, going to the body with the left hand. You got to do that, Max. If he does that, he'll get better results. Chocolatito slipping some of those shots, taking a half step back, throwing the jab, blocking with his hands up high. Little tap tap with the left hand by Chocolatito. Return fire from Quadras. Quadras with the uh, three, four good right hands. Mixed in a left there too. Chocolatito tap tap with the left hand, landed a nice right uppercut. Chocolatito seems to have good blood. hook, Roy. Yeah, seems to have blood from the right ear. A good hook by Chocolatito. Chocolatito now winning these exchanges because he's not only focusing on his offense where he's catching Quadras, but he's wary of Quadras' return fire and slipping them with little half-step backs and upper body movement. And countering off them. That's what's most devastating. That's what we're used to seeing with Chocolatito, winning those exchanges. When both fighters are flurrying, his are the punches landing, and he's, for the most part, avoiding return fire. At times, that hasn't been the case tonight. Oh, good good right hand right. from Quadras. Really big right hand. Chocolatito showing a magnificent chin, as always. That was actually a question, I think, coming into this fight, fighting a bigger, maybe stronger opponent. End of round nine. Let's go. When you go in, when you go in is when you have to start throwing. But if I stay in, then I throw everything and then I'm spent. I, well, what do you want, to run? You're running, you're getting tired. And you, Come on, it's the other situation, it's a bad situation. Here you see round eight, the fighters come together here. And as they come together, here's a vicious headbutt that I think caused that cut on Quadras' right eye. But after the butt was caused in round eight, here around now we see the vicious hook that made it bleed worse. See how that opened it up? So the headbutt was caused, I mean the cut was caused by a headbutt in round eight, but round nine the left hook opened it up more. I was certainly incorrect when I said I thought it may have been a punch. It was absolutely a headbutt. The officials got it right that caused that cut. Accidental headbutt. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through nine? <laughs> okay, Max, I got an 88-83, seven rounds to two, Chocolatito Gonzalez. You know, he just lands the harder punches. You got to give him credit for effective aggressiveness. You got to give him credit for good defense. He's just doing more in each and every round. Quadras is trying like heck. There's no question, you know? Throws a lot of punches. I don't think he's very effective with his shots. He does run a lot, and he does hold a lot. But all in all, I think Chocolatito's winning these rounds. Seven rounds to two, Chocolatito Gonzalez. I don't agree that uh, Quadras runs a lot. I wouldn't call it running quite. There was some running earlier. Since then, I think it's been, for the most part, intelligent movement. I also don't know if... if Chocolatito's landed the harder shots. 
because Quadras has landed some hard shots. I do think Chocolatito's probably winning the fights on point, fight on points, in spite of some of the good work Quadras is doing. I agree with you, Max. I think he's doing some good work, too. But I think Quadras' punches to Chocolatito's face have probably had more effect than Chocolatito's punches have had on him, because all he has is a cut from the headbutt which was opened up more by a punch, but, Choc but Chocolatito's phase is worse than we ever seen it, I think. In the old days, the championship rounds were 13, 14, and 15. Now they're 10, 11, and 12, so we're in the championship rounds. And the question is, how will Quadras respond in the past? His punch output has decreased in the second half of fights. He and Rudy Hernandez know going in, knew going in, he had to be in the best shape of his career because Chocolatito's stamina among his great qualities, he's always in tip-top condition, and his stamina is excellent. Big left hand over the top by Chocolatito. Quadras had that cut open up now over the right eye, but he's throwing some good combinations, and he's catching Chocolatito on the way in. This is one hell of a boxing match, a match max. You got two good fighters here, son. Yes, I mean, two guys really going at it. Punches coming from everywhere, hard punches, soft punches, long punches, short punches. These guys are really doing it, Max. Good left hook to the body by Roman Gonzalez, Roy. A good sneaky hook to the body, and that seemed, I think, to take a little wind out of Quadras' sails, but he continues to throw those uppercut flurries. I don't think nothing can take the wind out of Quadras' sails. Matter of fact, Chocotito looks spit right here. Very spent, Max. Look at him. I've never seen him look that spent before. I haven't either. September 27th, Real Sports returns with a look at how all the incorrect calls on balls and strikes have many wondering if it's time to use automated strike zone technology. And October 5th, catch the return of the fight game with Jim Lampley for in-depth discussion of present and upcoming boxing. It is the boxing show of record. Let's go, let's go. See, 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 some, see. some water. See. You gotta throw it to the body. Now give me, give me the towel. The towel, the towel. You gotta win these. You gotta win these. And you gotta win them by margin. You gotta win. He throws, you throw. You gotta throw. You understood? Did you understand? You're good, you're good, the Hawks. Look at his eyes. Guys, I need that done really good. That was a puddle. Yeah, All right, thank you. Ready? Ready? Time in. Start round 11, Roy. What's so impressive about Quadras here tonight is Chocolatito knew he needed to be better than he was last time out against the Royal secluded himself in Big Bear, trained with Triple G, felt he gave himself the absolute best chance to present the best version of himself tonight. And in spite of that, we have not seen his face like this. We have not seen him gassed like this. We have not seen him in a, as competitive a fight since maybe the Estrada fight. Well, Max, you fight a guy who's not used to losing, and you gotta teach him how to lose. Uh, Quadras is a guy who does not know how to lose. So you got to teach him how to lose, and that's not an easy thing to do. It's going to be interesting to see how some of these rounds are scored. There have been several that could have gone either way, I feel. Quadras definitely looks like the fresher fighter right now. And when you look like the fresher fighter in a competitive round, you may get the benefit of the doubt from the judges. I don't know, that was a pretty vicious uppercut right there that he took, though. A right uppercut halted all the aggressiveness that he had just then. Well, now he's back at it. Look at that. Look at that. Outworking Chocotito right now. Something we're not used to seeing either, Max. Boxing fans unfamiliar with Quadras before tonight. I think will win, lose, or draw, be quite familiar with him going forward. Of course. And this is what I like about Chocotito. He goes through all of that, 
And he comes back stronger than he was before it started, you know? Yes. <laughs> Same thing he did to Brian Valeria. Yup. Went through that career ending body shot almost and came back and ended up winning by stoppage. This is a conditioned fighter, Chuck yes, Lugino. It's the reason he can take the shots the way he does. It's the reason he can continue to throw high volume combinations with force in the 11th round of a grueling fight against the top competitor. He better watch himself though because that top competitor has not quit yet. Quadras holding, but Chocolatito seeming willing to oblige just then to take a breather. Looks to me. Chocolatito is really, really spit next. But when a fighter tortures himself in training camp, you get into the best. Oh, good body shot. Can. Yes, oh, yes, yep. That hurt. Yes, that hurt. That's where oh, that hurt he again. Went right back to the same yes, spot. He's Quadras did. He should have went back again. He may. That hurt. Chocolatito, maybe the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world. Hurt to the body along the ropes at the end of a competitive fight whose outcome still appears to be up in the air heading into the final round. You did good. You did good and you finished wrong. These are rounds that are very, very tight. Very, very tight. But listen, listen, you got to let go of the hands here also, okay? Not just him. You, you got to. You got to throw. Look how you have him. How are you? How do you have him? He's hurt. So they just damn round. You gotta win it. Let's go. You understood? Okay. This is our fight. Be careful. This is our fight. Be sharp. That right. That right. That crossing shot here. Let's go. Let's go, champion. Let's go, champion. Let's close. Let's go. Keep it clean. 12th and final round of a fantastic fight between two of the bright lights in the lightest divisions in boxing. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez and Carlos Cuadras. Cuadras full of confidence in the final round against Chocolatito. A man many if not most consider the best in the business in any weight class. Looking for a title belt in his fourth division. Something his idol and mentor, Alexis Arguello, was unable to do. Something no other Nicaraguan fighter in history has done. Big left hook. With Cuadras' back close to the ropes. And the outcome of this fight seemingly still in the balance. Cuadras. I think Quadras' corner should have told him to go for the knockout this round. Because to us, it appears he's down on the card. Well, well but that too, but at the same time, if he goes for a knockout and goes hard to the body, it would neutralize a lot of what Chocotito does and bring Chocotito down with him. Because if you do all this work and you don't bring Chocotito down with you, then he comes back with an onslaught that is going to be out of this world. What fantastic action in the middle of the ring in the 12th round. Let's not forget. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez seemed to be hurt by a body shot and had his back on the ropes to end the 11th. They come with their own slope. And Cuadras, the Mexican star, is swinging from his heels with looping power shots now, giving it's Chocolatito counterpunching opportunities, but also giving himself a chance to win by knockout. That's what he should do. Chocolatito taking advantage of the looping punches now, landing straight punches of his own. Cuadras breathing with his mouth open. He's been doing that since round one, Max. Backed into the corner temporarily, temporarily now almost on the ropes, keeping his back just off them. With an uppercut by Chocolatito. 30 seconds left in this terrific super flyweight fight. Well, this has been a good fight, Max. A very good fight. Good uppercut by Quadras.
Both men leaving it all out in the middle of the ring. Quadras maybe exceeded expectations of some. Was it enough? What a fight. What a fight. Not just because of the back and forth action, the shift in momentum, the stakes, all those things were terrific, but it was contested all, with all of those elements. It was contested at the highest skill level. My favorite kind of boxing match, most, Roy. Most definitely. Harold, tell us about the judges. Okay, uh, Max. You know, it's, it's interesting. They got one of my favorite judges from California, Max DeLuca. I think he's one of the best in the world, really. Uh, does a great job all the time. Robin Hecko from Illinois doesn't have that much world title experience. And Kathy Leonard from North Carolina certainly does not have that, you know, enough world title experience to be in this fight tonight. But be as it may, Three good judges were hoping for a good score. I think eight to four. Gonzalez is a good score, Harold. Let's see how the actual judges scored it. Eight to four seems about right. I could see seven five. I wonder if any judges had it six six or maybe even four quadras. There were several rounds that could have gone either way. I thought the first and the fifth, Harold, you gave them both to Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, but I could see where someone might have given them quadras, and that that fight's a draw. Quadras, meantime, an, an attraction in Mexico, a rising star in the lighter divisions, has done nothing to dim his star. If anything, it's shining as brightly or more brightly than ever, Roy. You'd better believe it. We got one Mexican guy not fighting the best fighter in the division, another Mexican guy begging for the best in the next division up. I mean, how much more could you ask for? We await the official decision. Let's go to Joe Martinez. Wow. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Primero, vamos a darle un aplauso para una tremenda pelea. How about a big hand for both of these warriors? And here are the scoring totals. Judge Kathy Leonard, 117-111. Max DeLuca, 116-112. Robert Hecko, 115-113. All four, your winner by unanimous decision. And new WBC Super Flyweight Champion of the World, Roman El Chocolatito. Okay, Roy, final punch stats, total punches. Chocolatito threw more, he landed more, and he landed at a higher percentage. But what's interesting is the percentage was marginally higher. Usually it's significantly higher than his opponent, but when you throw almost 100 punches more and you land more, I think the decision was right. 
five rounds, seven rounds to five, eight rounds to four, nine rounds to three, somewhere in that range for Chocolatito. And there you see power punches. He threw a whole lot more of those. Percentage was virtually even, but he threw so many more that he had a significant margin of victory there. Look at the punch zone. See where some of these shots landed. Quadras got work done to the body on Chocolatito. Chocolatito got work done to the body on Quadras. They, the percentage of their punches, each man thrown upstairs and downstairs, was similar. Where there's an edge, it goes to Chocolatito. And he won the fight. Roy, some thoughts on what you just saw. Man, what a fight. I mean, I can't think of the last time that this division has so many talented fighters, and I don't think we've ever really seen this many talented fighters broadcasted at this division, but I must say tonight, that was one of the best boxing matches that I've seen in a long time between two guys who both deserve to be champions, both will be back, both are gonna go on to be great champions. Man, I mean, I can't say enough about it. To say nothing of Naoya Inoue, the Japanese Phenom, who won a belt in his sixth pro fight, who's undefeated, most by knockout, a, a tremendous fighter of his own, getting ready for a super fight in the lightest divisions with Chocolatito, but Quadras is a player in that whole scenario now as well. And now here we are joined by the great Roman Chocolatito, Gonzalez. Tell us about that fight. Bueno, fue una gran pelea. Gracias a Dios, pues, todo salió muy bien. It was, a, it was a great fight, and thank God everything went very well. Fue una pelea muy difícil. It was a very difficult fight. Complicada, sabía que venía en la mejor condición. It was complicated, que él venía en mejor, buena condición, o que tú. And we know that we both came in very good conditioning. Chocolatito, was that the toughest of your career? Esa fue la pelea más difícil de tu carrera. Esta es la pelea más difícil que ha tenido. This is the most difficult fight I've had. More than Estrada. Más que Estrada. Así es. Yes, sir. Was it because he was a bigger fighter, naturally, than some of the fighters you've been fighting? Bueno, nunca he peleado en este peso, pero bueno, lo importante es que ganamos la pelea. You know, I've never fought at this weight, but the important thing is that we won the fight. Going into the 11th round, I think it was, I saw a look on your face of, I don't know how to put it, but of weariness, of, of not panic, but, but uh, uh, knowing that this was really a huge task that I've never seen before. Am I reading into that, or is that in fact how you felt late in the fight? I felt a, a bit affected because I was uh, hit on my, on my cheek. Pero gra gracias a Dios, la esquina me mandó y me, y me dijo que no tenía nada. But thankfully, the corner sent me back out and told me I had nothing on my cheek. Siempre pensaba en mi familia y en mis hijos. But, you know, I'm always thinking about my family and my children. Y gracias a eso, me dio la fortaleza para seguir adelante. And thanks, them, thanks to them, it gave me the courage and the strength to move on. Did he hurt you at all in this fight, particularly to the body? There was a moment toward the end of one of those rounds where we thought he'd hurt you to the body. No, en ningún momento. Pero no, no, sí, no. Alguna mano le sentí arriba de la cabeza. But you know, I did catch some blows up to the head. Yes, I felt those. En los pomos. To the cheeks. Okay. Naoya Inoui was ringside tonight, watching the proceedings. Everyone in boxing who follows the small weight divisions thinks that that is an absolute super fight. What do you think about fighting Inoui? With, with pleasure. It will be a God's blessing to fight with him. Finally, there are many more weight divisions now than there used to be. And there are many more belts. So it's a little bit apples to oranges. However, you tonight have won a belt in your fourth weight division, the first Nicaraguan fighter to do it. The great Alexis Arguello, your mentor, never did it. How do you feel tonight about that accomplishment, passing the great Alexis Arguello? Bueno, superarlo jamás, él siempre va a estar como número uno. You know, I never be better than him or above him. He would always be number one. Él es mi maestro. He's my teacher. 
Yo soy su hijo. You know, and I am his son. Que soy, que estoy siguiendo su legado. And I'm simply following his legacy. Esta victoria es del pueblo Nicaragua. This victory is for the public of Nicaragua. De mi familia. For my family. Principalmente de Dios. And the foremost God. Dios el que da la victoria. God is the one who gives la the victory. The strength. Y todos los que están aquí. And everyone that is here. Lo que queramos en la vida, pidámoselo a Dios. Whatever it is that you want in life, you need in life, you ask porque, God. Porque solo Dios da la bendición. Because only God can give you the blessing. Y la fortaleza, estoy aquí por Dios. And the strength, Dios. I am here because of no God. No por nadie, gracias a Taken. Else. Thank you, Taken. Al señor Honda. And Mr. Honda. Al HBO. Okay. And HBO. A toda mi familia, a Nicaragua. Okay, thank you, Chocolatito. Thank you for another outstanding performance. Okay, that, that wraps up the proceedings here. Lots to look forward to, including the light heavyweight showdown between Sergey Kovalev and Andre Ward on November 19th. Let's take a look at the sports count. Immediately following boxing tonight, catch the premiere of Road to Canelo Smith. Step into the lives of Canelo Alvarez and Liam Smith as they prepare for next weekend's 154 pound showdown. This and every Wednesday night, don't miss any given Wednesday with Bill Simmons. It's a weekly talk show spanning pop culture, also touching on sports, entertainment, the arts, and technology. Next Saturday, September 17th, it's the live fight between Canelo Alvarez and Liam Smith. Back in May, the Mexican superstar annihilated Britain's Amir Khan with a brutal one-punch knockout to continue his recent dominance as one of boxing's top stars. Oh, tremendous right hand shot by Canelo. Now he looks to keep his brand of momentum going as he challenges undefeated Englishman Liam Smith for a 154-pound title belt, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. September 27th, Real Sports returns, featuring a look at America's pastime. Night after night, in every major league game, the home plate umpire often makes the wrong call on balls and strikes. It happens so frequently, many wonder if it's time to use technology to automate the strike zone. October 5, it's the next installment of my show, The Fight Game. Join me, Max Kellerman, Bernard Hopkins, and Melissa Stark for in-depth discussion of the boxing landscape. October 29, live from Manchester, England, it's a rematch in the heavyweight division. Last November, Vladimir Klitschko's stranglehold on the heavyweight title finally came to an end via a unanimous decision loss to Tyson Fury. Vladimir Klitschko has been out-hustled all the way. The six-foot-nine-inch Fury now aims to continue his current reign as the heavyweight champion of the world, while Klitschko gets his chance at revenge. We bring you Fury vs. Klitschko Live, followed by a replay later that night. And November 19th, the highly anticipated light heavyweight showdown between division kingpin Sergei the Crusher Kovalev and fellow pound-for-pound -pound star Andre Ward. Both are undefeated, dominant, and among the sports elite. I want to be the light heavyweight champion of the world. I had to get past his step. He got past his step. So I'll see you in November. It's a true 50-50 fight. November 19th, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. Don't miss a moment of the action. For more information on the schedule and the fighters, go to HBO.com and InsideHBOBoxing.com. And that wraps up a spectacular night at the fights here at the famed Forum in Inglewood, California. So now let's send it back to Jim Lampley, who's hosting our coverage tonight from the O2 Arena over in London.